In this video, I will be showing you how to balance an equation using oxidation number method. This is the example I have chosen. It is a reaction between HBr and HBrO3, that is hydrogen bromide and hydrogen bromate, producing bromine and water. Now, if you look at this reaction, you will notice that two compounds of bromine, one is HBr, produces bromine as a product, and HBrO3, the bromate molecule, is also producing bromine, and the second compound is water. When you have such a scenario, you may have to take a slightly different approach. So this is what we will do. As you already know, we will be using the oxidation number method to balance this equation. We have earlier seen that an increase in oxidation number always indicates a process of oxidation. So here, if you are going from a negative value to the positive value, it indicates an increase in oxidation. So every time you determine the oxidation number and compare the oxidation numbers between the reactants and products, it tells you whether the process is oxidation or reduction. So this would be a guideline for you. So here we are increasing the oxidation from negative 7 to positive 7. Just, just as a generalization, you can use this guideline for any redox reactions in which you're using oxidation number method. So the next step would be to determine the oxidation numbers of the different elements that are present in the reactants and products. Now, if you are not familiar with the rules, I would advise you to watch my video on how to determine oxidation numbers. For the reasons said above, I have written the reaction slightly differently. The reactants are exactly the same. In the product side, instead of writing just Br2, I have written two atoms of Br, which means one Br is coming from hydrogen bromide and the second Br is coming from hydrogen bromate. So the oxidation number of hydrogen, as we already know from the periodic table, for a common compounds, it's always plus one. This is not an exception. It's not a metal hydride or it's not a molecular hydrogen. Therefore, the oxidation number is plus one. HBr as a molecule has a charge of zero. Therefore, the oxidation number is going to be minus one. Hydrogen again in this compound, as the rules apply, is plus one. In order to determine the oxidation number of bromine, this is what we will do. Hydrogen is assigned plus 1. Bromine is assigned a value of x. Oxygen, again, is assigned an oxidation number of minus 2 because this is a regular compound. It's not a peroxide. It's not a fluoride. Therefore, it's not an exception. Therefore, oxygen has an oxidation number of minus 2. There are three oxygens. Therefore, the net charge of oxygen would be minus 6. So we can write 1 plus x minus 6 is equals to 0, the net charge of the molecule, which reduces to x minus 5 is 0, or x is equals to 5. Here, x represents the oxidation number of Br in HBrO3. So now we have the oxidation number of bromine hyd hydrogen bromate, which is plus 5. Oxygen, which we already saw, is negative 2. On the product side, both the bromine atoms have an oxidation number of 0 because in the, they are considered to be in the elemental state. Hydrogen and oxygen again, plus 1 and minus 2. Once we have determined the oxidation numbers, next what we will be looking at is those elements undergoing change in oxidation, and we will determine which element undergoes oxidation and which element undergoes reduction. So what we are really looking for is an increase in oxidation number. So if you look at Br on the reactant side coming from HBr, the oxidation number is minus 1 and it changes into Br0, which means there is an increase in oxidation number. If you watch on the right, you will see minus 1 to 0 is an increase which means it has lost an electron. The process is oxidation. So we can write the oxidation half reaction releases one electron. Therefore, 
Br in HBr is being oxidized. Now again if you look at Br in HBrO3, the oxidation number was plus 5, it changed into 0 again. So let's look at the values on the right. From plus 5 to 0, there is a decrease in oxidation number, which means the Br in HBrO3 is being reduced or we have the reduction half reaction and for this process to take place we would need 5 electrons or 5 moles of electrons. As we already know in redox reactions the electrons required for reduction are produced by the oxidation half reaction and in this case the oxidation half reaction only produces one mole of electron. So balancing would mean making the number of electrons lost in an oxidation half reaction equal to the number of electrons gained by a reduction half reaction. In order for that to happen, we would need 5 moles of HBr so that 5 moles of electrons are produced. So we will multiply the oxidation half reaction by 5 and that becomes the coefficient of HBr. So now we have generated 5 moles of electrons which is being produced by oxidation and we need 5 moles of electrons for reduction and we have that. So potentially the equation is balanced. All we have to do is balance the remaining atoms by inspection. Since we added a coefficient of 5 for HBr, we need to add a coefficient of 5 for bromine that is formed from HBr, that is a 5Br in the product side. Now if you look at the number of bromine atoms on the left and right, it's balanced. We have 6 and 6. The elements that are not balanced are oxygen. So if you look at oxygen on the left side, in HBrO3 we have 3 oxygens. In the product side we only have 1 mole of water. So what we will do is, we will add a 3 as coefficient to H2O. That gives us 3 moles of oxygen and balances the oxygen atoms on both sides. Now if you count the hydrogen atoms on the right, you have 6 hydrogen atoms, 3 times 2. On the left side, you have 5 hydrogens from HBr and 1 hydrogen in HBrO3 making it 6. So we have balanced the equation for hydrogen, bromine and oxygen. The equation will look like this. 5 HBr plus HBrO3 produces 3Br2 because bromine exists as a diatomic molecule plus 3H2O. If you like the video, please rate, comment and subscribe. Thank you and have a great day.